smooth, it's fragrant, and it sits quietly by your sink. Waiting for you every morning, but behind this humble bar of soap lies a story of science, nature, and centuries of innovation. From the olives swaying under golden Mediterranean sunlight to the foamy bubbles swirling in your shower. This is the clean truth about soap. For thousands of years, humans have searched for ways to stay clean. The ancient Babylonians boiled animal fat with ashes. Egyptians mixed oils with alkaline salts. Even the Romans, the original spa lovers, used their own early versions of soap to wash away the day. But the modern soap we know today, it's more than just a cleanser. It's a perfect blend of chemistry and craftsmanship, a union of art and science. Soap has come a long way. It doesn't just fight grime and bacteria. It soothes, refreshes, and rejuvenates. It can be creamy, colorful, and infused with scents that calm the mind or awaken the senses. What once was a humble necessity has become an everyday luxury, a small, fragrant miracle that keeps us healthy, happy, and human. But what exactly goes into this perfect bar? Once upon a time, soap was made using animal fat, tallow to be precise, sourced directly from slaughterhouses. It worked, but let's face it, not the most pleasant origin story for something that's supposed to make you smell good. So scientists and soap makers began to look elsewhere, and they struck gold in the world of plants. Olive oil, coconut oil, palm oil. These plant-based alternatives were not only cleaner and more ethical, but also produced gentler, more luxurious soaps. Among them, olive oil became the shining star, prized for its smooth texture and nourishing properties. It gave birth to soaps that not only cleansed, but also cared for the skin, transforming a simple household necessity into an indulgent experience that blended science, sustainability, and self-care into one beautiful bar. The quality of soap depends on the quality of oil, and the quality of oil depends on the olives. Timing is everything. Harvest too early, and the oil is bitter. Too late, and it's flat and flavorless. So olive farmers wait for the perfect moment, when the fruit turns from bright green to deep purple. That's the signal, harvest time. There are two main ways to do it, by hand, slow and careful, or by machine, fast and efficient. Hand harvested olives tend to stay intact, minimizing bruising. Think of it like picking the ripest strawberries by hand versus shaking the whole bush. Once harvested, the olives are rushed to the mill. Every minute counts because oxidation can ruin the oil's quality and aroma. Before the magic happens, the olives need a good cleaning. Leaves, twigs, and dust are removed using vibrating screens and air blowers. Then comes the crush. Traditionally, stone mills, massive granite wheels, did the job. Slow but elegant, they pressed the fruit into a thick, aromatic paste. Modern factories use stainless steel crushers or hammer mills. Faster, cleaner, and more consistent, out comes a greenish-brown olive paste, thick, sticky, and full of potential. Now, the paste is mixed and kneaded in a process called malaxation, a kind of massage for olives. This helps tiny oil droplets merge into larger ones, making extraction easier. Temperature and time are crucial. Too hot, and the flavor is lost. Too cold, and the yield drops. Finally, the paste is ready to spin. Enter the centrifuge, the unsung hero of modern extraction. Spinning at incredible speeds, it separates oil from water and solids. Out pours a stream of golden liquid, pure olive oil. Smooth, aromatic, and ready for the next transformation. Now comes the real alchemy, saponification. It's the process that turns oil and alkali into soap and glycerin. The alkali most often used is sodium hydroxide caustic soda, or NaOH. In giant stainless steel vats, the olive oil is gently heated. The alkali is added bit by bit while stirring, triggering the chemical reaction that forms soap. The triglycerides in the oil break down, joining with sodium to form soap molecules, and glycerin as a byproduct. Temperature control is crucial. Too hot, and the soap scorches. Too cool, and the reaction stalls. 
Most soap makers aim for a range between 100 and 150 degrees Celsius. During saponification, the mixture's pH constantly changes. That's a measure of how acidic or alkaline it is. Soap makers test the pH at various stages, looking for the sweet spot where all the oils have reacted with the alkali. If the pH is too high, the soap can be harsh on skin, too low, and it won't clean properly. When the perfect balance is reached, usually around a pH of 9 to 10, the soap is ready for the next phase. And that byproduct glycerin? It's not waste, it's a treasure. Glycerin is used in cosmetics, lotions, even pharmaceuticals. A beautiful bonus from the soap making process. It adds smoothness, attracts moisture, and protects the skin, turning each wash into a gentle, hydrating experience that leaves your hands soft, clean, and cared for long after the bubbles fade. The thick liquid soap mixture now takes a surprising turn. It's sprayed over massive rotating metal drums, gleaming like mirrors under the factory lights. As the soap touches the cold surface, it solidifies instantly into a thin, delicate sheet, which is scraped off with a precise, rhythmic blade. The result? Long, curly ribbons of soap, soft yet firm, cascading like strands of pasta into waiting hoppers below. These ribbons fall into a large container, where a powerful screw called an auger slowly turns, pushing and compacting the soap forward to the next stage of its transformation, from fragile ribbons into the dense, smooth bars we know and love. The soap ribbons are rolled, mixed, and pressed again and again through heavy steel rollers that hum steadily across the production floor. This process, called milling, refines the texture, squeezes out excess moisture, and blends the ingredients evenly, making the soap smoother, denser, and more uniform. At this stage, the soap looks like soft pasta, pliable, silky, and slightly warm to the touch. And that's exactly what it becomes. It's then forced through a perforated metal mold known as a noodle plate, emerging on the other side as neat, uniform strands called soap noodles, the perfect foundation for crafting high-quality, luxurious bars. Now comes the fun part, customization. The soap noodles are transferred to a large mixer, where fragrances, colorants, and essential oils are added. Want a lavender-scented bar that smells like Provence in summer? Or a minty, exfoliating scrub for morning showers? This is where that magic happens. Some manufacturers add moisturizing agents like shea butter or coconut milk, or exfoliants like oatmeal and crushed apricot seeds. It's like the dessert station of a soap factory. Creativity meets chemistry. Once the mixture is just right, a trapdoor opens and the soap drops into another auger. It's mixed again and extruded one more time, smoothing out every last imperfection. The now perfect soap is extruded, or plotted, into long, continuous bars. It looks like cookie dough being squeezed out of a giant press. Automated cutters then slice it into individual bars with mechanical precision, everyone identical in shape and size. Some factories use laser-guided machines that can cut hundreds of bars per minute. Freshly cut bars are still soft and moist. They need time to cure. Drying rooms with carefully controlled temperature and humidity remove excess moisture and harden the soap. This process can take anywhere from a few days to several weeks, depending on the formula. The longer the drying time, the harder and longer lasting the soap becomes. Once hardened, the bars move to stamping machines. Here, metal dies press into the soap, imprinting logos, patterns, or decorative designs. It's the soap's signature moment, the final touch of identity. From a plain white block to a branded, beautiful bar, the transformation is complete. The last step, packaging. Depending on the brand, soap may be wrapped in paper, sealed in boxes, or enclosed in biodegradable plastic. Packaging isn't just for protection, it's part of the story. The colors, the texture, the scent seeping through, all designed to tempt your senses and tell you what's inside. Throughout the entire process, strict quality control keeps everything in check. Technicians test samples for pH, consistency, and fragrance, ensuring each bar meets safety and regulatory standards. And then there's the environmental side. 
Soap making produces byproducts, leftover alkali, impurities, and wastewater. But modern factories don't just throw it away. They recycle, neutralize, or repurpose it, turning waste into useful materials and keeping the planet clean too. Because what good is a bar of soap if it pollutes the world it's meant to cleanse? Today, soap comes in every imaginable form. Bars, liquids, foams, gels, even paper-thin sheets. It's a simple product, yet it plays a massive role in public health. The World Health Organization says washing hands with soap can reduce the spread of disease by up to 50%. That's not just hygiene, that's heroism in a bar. From a humble olive hanging on a tree to a glossy bar sitting by your sink, soap has traveled quite a journey. It's a blend of nature's bounty and human ingenuity, a daily ritual connecting us to centuries of craftsmanship and science. So the next time you lather up, take a second to appreciate the chemistry, the care, and the centuries of evolution in your hands. Because that tiny bar of soap, that everyday miracle, is one of humanity's simplest yet most powerful inventions. If this story made you see soap in a whole new light, share it with someone who loves learning how everyday things are made. And if you want to keep exploring the science and stories behind the objects we use every day, make sure to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and leave a comment telling us what everyday product you want to see next.